Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Donna here from Blind and Homesteading. I hope you're all well. It's a stunning day here today. It's the middle of winter. I'm in the lower half of the North Island of New Zealand. And uh, yeah, no one would believe it's winter. It's just stunning. However, it was a minus three frost, so it was very white this morning. So I am joining you today to do my little bits that I do each weekend to keep my cupboards stocked and so that I don't have to buy packaged stuff and I like to cook from scratch. So some of that includes mixed spices. I think I have said before that my daughter and I did have a mixed spice business for some time. So we did put a whole lot of recipes together um, that I still use uh, the business we don't do anymore, but I still use the mixes. And so today I am going to make some taco seasoning for you. Now, it's not something that Stuart and I use. Uh, to be honest, I tend to put different ones in. But my daughter and my granddaughter both use those taco packets that you buy. Now, they can be quite expensive and they, it's only one packet per meal and it's rubbish i'm a wee bit of a greenie so i don't like a lot of rubbish so i offered to make them one never made a taco mix before but i have a good solid knowledge of spices and herbs so we're going to do that and i thought i would share a bit of my solid knowledge so that you can play with your herbs and spices and don't feel too intimidated by it so we're going to do that I haven't had breakfast yet this morning, tummy's a wee bit rumbly, so I thought I would make myself a, a um, smoothie with my using my kefir and my yoghurt, because Stuart's gone to move some stock and he's going to pick up my milk on the way back, so I will need to have my kefir and yoghurt all used up this week so that I'm ready for the next delivery. And also... I have been watching, um, it's been a beautiful day today, but it actually hasn't had been the greatest of weather the last few days. It's been pretty miserable. And I love all the seasons for all the different reasons. And winter for me is just one of those ones where you bunker down at home, the fire's going, you've got your knitting, you know, you've got some warm food and some great podcasts to watch. And so I've been watching two podcasts. One is another New Zealand podcaster, who is Stacy? who does Farmer's Wife Homesteading, I think it's called Farmer's Wife Homestead, and um, she made some savouries last week, and I thought, gosh, I haven't made savouries for years, and my partner can't eat cheese, and so I thought, that's a great idea, because Friday night we love, like, savouries for tea and watching the rugby, or, um, and so I've, I made a whole lot of savouries, <laughs> a whole lot, um, so I'll talk a little bit more about those and show you those. I won't show you how I made them because you can go and follow Stacey's uh, podcast on that. She's great at how to explain how to make those. And uh, another one that I've been watching is, oh gosh, I didn't write it down. I think her name's Serena and she's an Australian homesteader. I'll, I'll, I won't link it down below because to be honest, you can Google it and find it. And it's easier for you than me because... I don't know if I said at the beginning of this, but I am legally blind, so I only have a, a wee little bit of sight. Uh, so I will knock things over, break things, smash things. <laughs> That's just part of who I am, covered in bruises. So I'm always, I had a fall last week, so all bruises down the side. Um, oops, see, I nearly knocked that over. That's just part of life. But I'm also a social worker and uh, really like to... And talk about my knowledge that I've learned over the years with my degree in psychology. I get a bit geeked out by psych um, and mental well-being and etc. So I'll share some tips along the way. That's a little bit about me. My guide dog Kenzie is about somewhere. I actually don't even know where she is. She's about because I heard her, but I can't see her. Two reasons: can't see her because I'm blind. Can't see her. Oh, there she is over there. I'll, what I can do is turn you around and show you what a stunning day it is out my windows. That this is the view I have from my windows when I'm cooking, and uh, Kenzie is down the bottom. So let's see. I'll, t I'll turn you around and show you. Probably not wise, but hey ho. There's my view from my kitchen bench, and Kenzie, Kenzie, Kenzie is there poking her head up <laughs> she says don't disturb me i've got this stunning view 
and uh, yes, yeah, so it is a gorgeous day. As I said, so Kenzie's over there enjoying the sun, I'm enjoying the view, and so let's enjoy some spices. So first off is make myself a smoothie, and I thought I'd do that with you so that you can uh, get an idea of how I use my homemade yogurt and my homemade kefir. Kefir is a fermented milk made with uh, grains. I'm just plugging this in while I'm talking. Made with sort of a grain. It looks a bit like cauliflower. And you, it, what it does is it eats the lactose out of the milk. You leave it on the bench for a couple of days in the milk. It eats all the lactose, but it ferments the milk. And it's a fantastic drink, milk drink. Or you can add it to things. Um, I like to drink it straight or put it in my porridge. Uh, it's a probiotic, so it's really good for your tummy. So um, I do notice a difference when I'm taking it with my digestive system. I, I do think it feels better when I'm dr drinking it than not. So I'm going to make myself, I'm not, I'm, we're off on an adventure, as the guy off Hobbit would say. Um, it's always an adventure with me because I spend half my time looking for things. I'm going to make a I'll move you down and I will just talk through my quick little uh, so the first thing to add is frozen fruit and I find it easier to use and this is probably my site pay funnel so I put you know this is the guesstimate thing frozen fruit in and I usually put inch and a half two inches in there uh, I'll put, just put my fruit back so it doesn't pour in the freezer it goes Sorry. Okay, frozen fruit. Then I like to have a banana in mine. Um, high in potassium. So and um, great for my compost. So I keep the banana skin and put it in my compost. I just break my banana up. Now this is when you can also add things like spinach leaves. I haven't got any at the moment. It's the middle of winter and um, I don't. I haven't bought them. But um, spinach and uh, yeah, anything you want. So the other thing I like to add is some chia seeds. Uh, and these are a superfood. I usually eat about a tablespoon. They're like a little seed. Well, they are a seed. Um, I'll see if I can show you some. They're a little seed, and they're a superfood. So they are super, super, super good for you. Um, and so I like to put a tablespoon of those in there. I have two different kinds, actually, but I'll just put the dark ones in. You can get black ones, black ones, white ones, mixed ones. I bought these from Moore Wilson's in Wairarapa. Um, so I'm not sure where you would get them where you are, but that's where I got those from. And they can be added to any sort of drink, etc. So chia seeds. Then I add yogurt. Which one is my yogurt? I have to work out which one is which. Because they use the same type of... And again, it's just a homemade yogurt that I... Oops. That I've made. And probably another couple of inches. And I've just about finished that. Which is good. Perfect timing for when I get my more milk. And forgive me, I do put the lids and things back on while you're here because I'm going to knock them over. If I, well, well, I will knock them over. And then last of all, um, I wait till it goes down and settles a bit and then I pour in my kefir. Now you could put anything you want in there, um, liquid-wise, but I use kefir, which is, basically works like a milk. Put that lid back on those. So I haven't got much kefir or yogurt left, so that, that's perfect time in getting some milk. Uh, push those seeds down, like all of those, and put the, now you can use a blender, a stick blitzer, a stick blender, whiz, whatever you like, but I have one of these little hosema flicks. Like this. It takes a couple
couple of minutes so what I'll do is I'll pause you I will mix this then we'll come back so I can eat it I'm back so all mixed up took oh, probably a minute or so I just didn't want you to live with the noise and there the ice has made it all nice and sort of cold it's my mixed berry and banana smoothie for my well it's brunch really because it's breakfast is way past so I'm gonna drink this while while we uh here cheers cheers guys mm. oh yeah absolutely perfect 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 sweet tart fermented um and healthy that does mean you've had quite a bit of sugar natural sugars yes but a lot of fruit and a, and a whole banana a whole banana does equate to two pieces of fruit um sugar wise so really that's a lot of fruit i eat three to four pieces of fruit a day every day it's just something that i've always done my partner does too we eat a lot of fruit and veggies um but fruit a lot and so for me I now know that I can't have too much more other fruit because I've had my fruit quota. So if you are having smoothies, just keep that in mind, especially if they're fruit. Um, you know, that is a lot of sugar, albeit natural sugar, which is good, but it's still sugar. So that's my breakfast done, just wipe the bench, uh, give the bench a wipe. I don't know if I did talk about my dishcloths, I crochet my own so there's a crocheted one my only regret is the color i did them in for two reasons it never looks clean but it's that's actually the color of the um stuff and um i can't find it on the bench <laughs> so next time i'm going to do some fluoro colored ones some hot pink or orange or something uh instead but i yeah i did crochet them it's made out of cotton and i've got a couple of friends that have made me some knitted ones which is lovely and i've Feel quite blessed to have those but I do like natural ones when they've had it or once they've had it from the kitchen they'll go into the cleaning pile and just be used for cleaning rags and then of course you can put it in the compost because it's cotton or um, burn it in the fire and the ash goes in the compost so there's no waste no plastic no waste I don't know if you know but the microfibers in plastics have been found in cells of fish so yeah it's not good mm. yum 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 right now i was going to talk about these savories that i made thanks stacy if you're watching absolutely beautiful stacy showed me how to do them i have made savories before but it's quite nice to have a reminder so I have done bacon and egg, and I have done mince, and there aren't any left because they're my favourite, <laughs> mince and mashed potatoes. So, um, and Stuart will eat all, all of these, you know, whereas often there's, you know, you buy those packets and there's the mini quiche ones, I've always got cheese in, um, I love cheese, but... I, I understand what he says everything has cheese in it uh, so you know and then you can get your um, often potato top potato pies have got cheese in them cheese pies and potato tops often put cheese on the top so it limits him quite a bit so I think he's quite enjoyed the thought that he can just make these and they were so easy as I say it's just follow Stacy's ingredients and, and instructions and I am um, going to enjoy those They'll probably be our lunch today. Um, well, afternoon lunch. I was going to cook a, a roast, um, but Stuart forgot to take the meat out of the freezer. So we won't be having a roast tonight. I don't know what we're having. I'll, I'll figure that out. So, as I said, taco mixes and spice mixes. Now, I'm gonna, I'll just bring you up again so we can talk about how mixes work. So, I don't want to lose you. Um, when you make a spice mix, there is a, a recipe to that you can follow, a sort of rule of thumb, I suppose. Um, and so, it, oh, here's a little um, 
interesting thing. I heard it this morning. So some where sayings came from, like, you know, Saved by the Bell and those sorts of things. The rule of thumb was in the medieval times, men could beat their wives with a stick, but it could only be as couldn't be any wider than their thumb <laughs> so oh, you know the social worker in me is going oh my god but that was the times you know we've changed now we know that that's not right but that's where the science the thing rule of thumb came from it's the men to beat their wives couldn't use a stick thicker than their thumb how's that so rule of thumb for mixing spices is it's a triangle my perfect perfect drawing here in my beautiful powerpoint present presentation so uh, when you think of mixing your spices there's always a base spice at the bottom and that's the one you tend to put more of in and then you have your flavors that come in in the next couple of um, triangular bits and they they are definitely the more flavorful um, things like oregano and um, coriander and all of those sort of lovely milder spices flavors and spices are in there that the bottom one is tends to be things more like salt uh, pepper and it depends on the thing some uh, onion powders often are sort of a or garlic powder they're often sort of bases but your bases tend to be those things like salt Himalayan salt rock salt sea salt all of those sort of ones and then you start adding your flavors and then you start getting to the spicy ones, the ones that give the, you know, um, zhuzh or um, Avril Lagasse, the chef used to get the bam. So that, that's the bit that gives you the bam in your spice. So that's when you start going into chilli powder, chilli flakes, um, pa uh, paprika, although paprika is a little bit milder. But um, yes, yeah, so that's your rule of thumb. So if you are wanting to play and make some mixes, Go five, four, three, two, one. So five teaspoons of one, four teaspoons of another, three teaspoons of another, two teaspoons, one teaspoon, and build them up. So you could use quarter teaspoons or cups, you know, five cups, four cups, three cups, two cups, one cup. So depending on how much you're making. So that's kind of the rule of thumb on how to make a spice mix yourself. So don't be afraid, have fun, have a play. And taste those spices you know it's not very often that we actually dip our finger in a, a herb or a spice and, and say oh what does ground cumin taste like um, you know ground cumin is kind of it's very nutty and sweet ground cumin is can be used sort of a, almost like a substitute for nutmeg a cinnamon I should beg your pardon cinnamon uh, but it's a savory cinnamon so yeah that's so don't be afraid to taste and how hot things are, you know, taste it. If it if it's you know, bam. Well, then you know maybe you just put the one, the one teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, whatever. And if if it's a milder one, then you go down and put into these twos and threes. So um, that's that is a really good rule of thumb for making herbs and spices. Five, four, three, two, one is my suggestion on how to go on making spices. You know, we, we have made things like cumin um, mix, baby baby Cajun spice. So a baby Cajun spice is one where we knew that people who just like warmth but didn't like heat or didn't like the bam. Um, I haven't been able to buy them yet, but I am looking for, uh, and I might have to buy them online, Korean chilli flakes. So Korean chilli flakes are supposed to give you the flavour of chilli but not the bam. Um, and... Um, you know, I thought, I thought I'd like to try those. So that, that would be one that I would probably use in the number two or three uh, spot in the triangle because it hasn't got the bam. Right up the top is sort of more, you know, hot cayenne um, or Cajun spice or, you know, things like that. Um, I do have a mix that I've made, which is a, an Indian recipe mix for my dal and... That's definitely using the 54321 system or rule of thumb so that um, it makes a beautiful dal mix. Or it can be for any curry, really. You can use it with chickpeas and potatoes and pumpkin or um, you know, anything, paneer, if you want to make a homemade paneer, um, which is uh, Indian cheese. Um, and I've made paneer before. It's, it's really quite easy. It's 
no different than making cream cheese but um, slightly different it's uh, you flatten it between two plates and put pressure on it overnight to take get all the way out so that it's quite set as a and then cut it into cubes and then you can use it in your curries and things so um, I have made paneer before if you want to make paneer um, I haven't made it for a long long time so I'd have to refresh my memory but that might be something that we could make in the future uh, and make a nice paneer curry um, sag paneer is lovely so sag is a um, it's a it's a bolognese sauce made with spinach or silver beet greens uh, it's an Indian sauce um, and it always reminds me of a bolognese sauce a you know Italian bolognese sauce made it with tomatoes similar to that but it's actually made with spinach so it's green and it's really yummy um, yeah Actually, friends of mine and myself went out to dinner to an Indian, Indian, re, Indian restaurant recently and we talked about sag and agreed that it is a, a fuffle to make because it can be quite messy. <laughs> but, you know, we could, we could give it a try one day again. Um, it's not something that Stuart enjoys, but I love it. So maybe in the future we can do things like that. But there's your rule of thumb. So I'm going to now make some taco spices for my granddaughter and daughter. They can have them. I, we won't use it. I thought I'd make one for us, just a small one, anyway, just to have it there. You never know. We might use it in something, in a mince or something. But uh, it's not something that we would probably gravitate to. And so let's make this taco spice mix together for my daughter. So I'll move you down so that you can see. Do, 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 do. Let's see if you can see. Yep. I'll move you around a wee bit. I'm going to have a slug of my brunch. <laughs> which is divine. And the chia seeds are getting, they get puffy. They kind of fill up with, you know, they absorb the moisture, so they get puffy. Right, I have a recipe here. All beautifully printed and typed up and <laughs> in the true Donna way. I am going to multiply this by four because it is a single recipe so let's start i've got my my bowl my spices have a wee window open because when you are working with spices especially fine ones like paprika and that they can get quite puffy up in your nose and kusha and i used to spend a lot of time sneezing and coughing with them this recipe um is a five four three two one in that the top one, the chilli powder, is the top base one. Um, and, you know, that's obviously because it's quite a hot taco and you only use two and a half tablespoons equates to a packet of ta bought taco mix. And then these in here, the cumin, the salt and the ground pepper and paprika are the twos and threes in our triangle. And then you get down to the chilli flakes oregano and onion powder they're our ones and twos so it is definitely it's in a triangle um, amount so the first one is chili powder now chili powder is a mix of powders uh, and I don't have a chili powder mix I have cayenne pepper which is also a mix so paprika is a single ch um, chili that has been a pepper so Paprika is one pepper and it's ground, uh, whereas cayenne pepper and chilli pepper are mixes, they're blends, they usually have things like onion powder etc in them. So I'm going to use cayenne pepper, I'm pretty sure that that is, you know, <laughs> sorry Kushler and Zoe, if that's hot, I'm sorry, if it's not hot, it's mild, that's the blind thing, I don't know whether that's hot or mild, you guys can have a laugh. So, it says one tablespoon, so as I said, I am going to um, divide it, multiply it into four, so that's four tablespoons. One, two, three, four. Now, to try it, you can wet your sweat your finger with a little bit of water, dip it in, try it. Yep, that's hot, but it's not 
Oh, <laughs> yes, that's hot. It's not go through your body hot. <coughs> it took my breath away though. So that is definitely bam. It's surprising that it's on the bottom. But, oh. <coughs> there, don't be afraid to test them. Now I'm going to have a runny nose. Um. <coughs> <coughs> silly me anyway no not silly me you've got to try it so that was hot that is the base one because taco seasoning obviously is a hot um, mix I better put the lid, lids on these so that I don't mix them up so the next one is one and a half teaspoons of ground cumin so again we're doing four so ground cumin is Da, 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 to find it again I have to read all my things every time uh, paprika that's oregano chilli powder cumin ground cumin so one and a half by four is uh, oh, one and a half teaspoons right so teaspoons is six teaspoons isn't it? So four. Oh, take that off. Those things are annoying. One, two. Now I'm getting that nice taste of that chili. Now, as I said, cumin, which I'm going to try for you, is nutty it's spicy it's it's very yum it's not as sweet as i remember it but it is yum it's quite nutty right so the next one is one teaspoon of sea salt now i didn't have any sea salt but i did have himalayan salt so again because we're going four we're not four teaspoons i hope i did six teaspoons in there oh, i have no idea too busy talking so six teaspoons of Himalayan salt. One, <coughs> no, four teaspoons. Two, three, four. And then the next one is ground pepper, which is paprika. Uh, ground, oh no, uh, ground black pepper. So black pepper, and it is... Four teaspoons. Four teaspoons. Oh, we'll make that too, shall we? This is the blind thing. But I'll give it to them and they'll watch this and they won't even want to use it. <laughs> now I can't get the fourth one out. There we go. So that's black pepper, ground black pepper. Put the lid back on that so I don't spill it. That cumin's given quite a, a spicy, a hot after flavour. So what happened was the cayenne had a boom at the beginning and it's given me a nice flavour. But the cumin has given me a nice flavour and then a little boom at the end. That's how that's worked. <coughs> uh, black pepper, half a teaspoon paprika. So that is two teaspoons because we're quadrupling. Two teaspoons. Oh, these... These things are a little annoying on things. Oops. Let's see about two. Again, I'm going to try that for you. Um, smoky. That's actually not a smoked paprika, though. So it's got a... Um, sort of a mm, it's, yeah like a smoked uh, pepper smoked paprika so the next one is garlic powder I've got a really nice excuse me garlic powder garlic garlic I buy these in bulk so there's the garlic powder because I use them so most if you ever look at packets like gravy packets and things <coughs> so it's quarter of a teaspoon so it's just one teaspoon most of them have garlic powder and 
onion powder in them. For some reason, they, they you know, any gravy mix or anything. <clears throat> right, the next one is onion powder. Same thing. Um, I've got minced garlic. So what was that one? That was garlic powder. We don't want minced garlic. I'm going to pause you, and I'm going to go and get the onion powder. Right, I've got the onion powder now. Made it wrong. So, onion powder. Quarter of a teaspoon of chili flakes. Now we're into the the uh, top number one in the triangle. Quarter of a teaspoon. So same as I might because that chili powder was quite hot. So I might I should have one teaspoon. What I might do? Oh, there's less of things. So I might do half a teaspoon so that it's not too bad for them because that paprika, as we found out, was quite hot. And the last thing is a quarter of a teaspoon or by four a teaspoon of oregano. Mm. And that's a herb, savoury herb. And I quite like it, so I put a little bit extra in. Okay, that is it. Quite a little mix of <coughs> um, herbs and spices. Looks like, it looks a lot like taco mix. So let's hope. Smells like a lot like taco mix. So I'm going to let, get them to try that. And I'll, I'll try it too. As I say, we don't use taco mix much, but I'll give it a try. So I'm just giving it a jolly good stir. And then I'm going to put it in two bags for them. And they can... Oops. Nearly, nearly, nearly. So two tablespoons is a packet. <clears throat> so two. Let's see how many got we've got there. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. So there are four packets in there. Now I'm not sure how much a packet of mix is. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing a couple of dollars anyway. Um, I suppose even a, a, well I don't know if it's $1.50, I think it might be dearer, but say a couple of dollars. Um got a really hot spot where they, I ate that uh, cayenne pepper so yeah look it's I'm doing the I'm doing the hard yards for you I'm really testing things so that you know that you can cough and splutter after tasting uh, cayenne pepper but that smells lovely it does smell like taco mix um I, I think if I, I mean, if you wanted to make a Mexican, you could add some mixed herbs in here so that it had a little bit more herby flavour. Um, yeah, I, that, so there we go. That's taco. I've never made it before. Um, I'm surprised that cayenne pepper is the number, the top bottom of the, I'll bring you back up, bottom of the uh, triangle. But... You only need two tablespoons and a big thing of mince. So when you think of it, two tablespoons. Um, so how many? So that's eight tablespoons. Tablespoon. Yeah, you're probably only putting in a teaspoon of cayenne pepper into a, a into a. a hmm, no, you'd be putting a tablespoon in, wouldn't you? Eight. So that is eight, half a tablespoon. So you'd be putting half a tablespoon of cayenne pepper into a mix of mince. So that's not, um, 
yeah I can see how that would be warm and leaning to hot but not wham like I got the cough um yeah I'll let you know how that goes so I hope you've enjoyed that um I am still really enjoying my and uh, my kefir and berry banana it's gone quite thick so I'm going to have to add some more kefir I think that's because the chia seeds have swelled up in it um we'll have those savouries for lunch and later on I get my milk uh, delivered so I'm not going to go through uh, the process with you today because I'll show you my cheese another day um but what I do the minute I get it is I, well, I let it settle and then I scoop the cream off um, I've got some cream left from last week so I'll just whip up some butter with that uh, I'd never made my herbed butter in the end and that's something I'd like to do so see how my energy levels go later on this afternoon I it, um, one of the things I do suffer with is fatigue with this eye disease when you're blind things are harder anyway uh, you, you know something as simple as walking from your chair to the kitchen takes a, a little bit more memory because you've or have you know a little bit more energy because you're scanning and making sure that has somebody hasn't you know Kenzie hasn't put a toy in the way or um, I haven't stupidly left something which I've do many many times something out that I can get caught up in like wool <laughs> with my knitting um, or Stuart hasn't put something there he's pretty good at not leaving things around but you know sometimes he can bring a vacuum cleaner out and forget that it's you know it's uh, that I haven't been told about it so yeah I don't want any falls so I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day. I've, Sunday is definitely my day of rest. As I say, I work six days a week. Shorter days, but I do work six days, so Sunday's quite precious. I'm going to listen to my book. Um, I'm still enjoying Outlander. Catch up on a little bit of Coro and uh, do, make some cheese and kefir and yogurt this afternoon. So enjoy the rest of your day, and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.